Students, thank you for coming on time today for Operation Vengeful Calculus. I hope you studied, because the test today is closed notes, closed book, and open fire. Now that we have landed, let's get started with the test. Question number one. A UFO crash lands into the African forest at terminal velocity. This of course creates a lot of open spaces. What is integral for your team to have? Is the answer A. A heavy with a rocket launcher that can cover large distances and shoot an entire area. B. An upgraded sniper that can see all the way across the map and shoot at the aliens. C. A support who can throw a smoke grenade thus cover our advance. D. An assault that can close distances with two moves and then shoot. Or is the answer E. All of the above. If you guessed E, you'd be right, but you'd still be very wrong. Because we don't have any of those things. We don't have a heavy because she's in the ER because someone, Beetle Burr, shot her in a panic induced shooting spree. Our sniper, also Beetle Burr, was just short of getting his promotion that we'd need to make it so he can shoot across the map. We don't have a support because DJ Sucre is also in the hospital from plasma wounds. And we don't have an assault because someone, Evil Emmy San, decided in a panic last mission to kill our assault. May Maddie's soul rest in peace. So what do we have? We have three rookies and Beetober who has a sniper rifle but can't shoot across the map. That may not be the answer we need, but it's the answer we deserve after last mission's poor performance. So what's our plan? Crash landed UFO missions tend to happen in these forested areas that have wide open no man's lands surrounded by a lot of heavy and half cover. For this reason, you want to end up trying to catch the aliens off guard. If you fail to catch them off guard, you end up in a position where you're both stuck behind heavy cover and you're trying to break them out of it. We've already covered how we're low on the ability to break through enemy's cover, so we want to avoid any standoffs. Remember that as soon as the aliens see you, whether or not it's in the middle of their turn, they will immediately take cover without firing upon you. For this reason, we're moving the team into open spaces hoping that some alien patrol will walk right into us, will get to open fire on them, and be able to take out the team before they even have a chance to set up. As you saw earlier, we heard some alien movement to the left here, so we're going to orient our team that direction, so that we can open fire upon the aliens if they patrol to us, and then get behind some heavy cover. So naturally, we get patrolled by the aliens on the other side. Regardless, the aliens walk right into our overwatches, and we open fire. Oh, it's clusters of shots like that that make me want to take up drinking. My future alcoholism aside, we catch a little bit of a break. The aliens have opted for half cover that is lower than us. This will increase our odds to hit once we get a little closer. So I move Beetle Burr and Pharaoh's Queen to the right, Jimmy to the left, and Citrus Architect behind this tree a little further back. Now, looking at all the shots, no one really has an excellent shot. The only person with greater than 50-50 odds is Beetober, and he's wielding a pistol since he moved. It's important in situations like this to think clearly. I moved Jimmy up to where she could throw a grenade and could, if I so desired, kill both aliens this turn. We have full control. With control established, we now have to ask, what do I want? What I want is a lot of money and a well-cooked steak. But in terms of XCOM, what I want is I want everyone on this mission to try and get a promotion. I want Beetober to get a promotion so we can get him the critical upgrade he needs as a sniper, and everyone else I just want to not be a rookie anymore. So even though she only has a 45% chance of hitting, we give Pharaoh's Queen a chance to see if she can get the kill. Since she was unable to get the kill, it's time for damage control. First thing we do is we let Beetober whittle down the sectoid's health. Next, we need to make sure that this one health sec toy doesn't go anywhere, so we put Citrus Architect on Overwatch. Sure that we've now fully disincentivized the sectoids for moving, we let Jimmy introduce herself. Hoorah! Excellent work, Zero Six Jimmy. Spooked by the death of his buddy and Citrus Architect's Overwatch, the alien stays put, which is right where Beetle Burr wants him. Man, look at the slow motion effect. I don't even have to put it in. Beetleboard prints it in for me. Makes the editing go so easy. So with that paragraze down, we start moving towards the UFO itself. 
In these UFO recovery missions, there tend to be two groups of greys that run around and there's always an outsider inside the ship. What is an outsider, you ask? We'll get to that in a minute. The smart thing to do is to run around the UFO looking for the greys until you find them and murder them. That's the smart thing. What I do is hear that these sectoids are running around, assume they must be on the other side of the UFO, and really just get impatient. And thus, we get to meet the Outsider. Outsiders act as sort of mini-bosses. They have very high accuracy, a gun that kills most rookies in one shot, and they always spawn from the interior of the UFO, meaning they always have good cover to start. The best way to deal with an Outsider is to have an assault run and gun their way in. But our assault is, uh... Kinda dead. Now, I could use Citrus Architect to blow a hole through his cover by throwing a grenade, dealing him some pretty good damage, and then letting the rest of the team try and finish him off. But I have concerns that if I leave him up there, and we miss a few shots, the Outsider will just simply kill Citrus Architect. So I instead opt to move Citrus Architect back a little bit, and bait the Outsider into running up to kill Citrus Architect, and into the overwatch shots of Pharaoh's Queen and Beatober. Unfortunately for me, my impatience comes back to bite me in the keister. Enemy Come on, little cousin, hit the shot, hit the shot! Damn it. PQ, language, come on, we're recording. So now we're having to deal with two greys on top of the outsider. Before their arrival, we had the option of trying to flank with Jimmy and Pharaoh's Queen. But, in what some experts are calling a pickle, we now have two other sectoids. Any flank would have to deal with them first, and I'd rather not have two people without any grenades facing off against two sectoids. Never fight with even numbers if you can help it. That's some good solid XCOM advice. Write that down if you want. You can use that. That's free. I opt for a strategy of staying back at the more defensible position and trying to coax both the sectoids and the outsider into coming into my firing sight away from their comfy cover. And while the outsider stays back and plays it smart, one of the things with the biggest brain on the battlefield charges forward. And, brainiac it is, it's nice and flanked for Beedober. Why don't you send him home for us, Beedober? Mother pus bucket. So that sectoid's still standing. Spectacular. So we gotta keep that sectoid there. So we pin him with an overwatch, pray the outsider and the sectoid don't move in the same turn. They don't, and we give Beedober a second chance. There we go. Three sectoids down, one sectoid and one outsider to go. And that outsider's the much bigger concern. I keep hoping he'll come out of his stronghold, but this thing's doing its best Terran impersonation and is turtling like none other. The only way we're going to get the outsider to move is if we shuffle some of the soldiers around. This is a problem for PQ and Citrus Architect, because if they are too close, he'll just straight up open fire on them and kill them in one shot, so they have to remain hunkered down. This leaves two overwatch shots between Jimmy and the pistol-wielding Beedober. This also means that we're relying on them to hit their overwatch shots, and we've seen how that's gone today. But maybe our luck will finally change. Jimmy held up her end, now it's up to Beedober. Come on, Beedober, come on, Beedober. Yes! Boom! Derivate that! Man, this mission just got a lot easier. We're now on the hunt for a single gray. And, lucky for us, he runs right into us! And check out this trick shot from Pharaoh's Queen. Gun ain't even pointed in the right direction, still gets a hit. Muzzle direction is only a suggestion for the bullet's path of travel in XCOM. And this isn't even talking about the fact that she's shooting through Citrus Architect and somehow phasing through the tree. What a shot! With that, Operation Vengeful Calculus has been completed. Class dismissed. Now it's on this trip back home that we normally start discussing promotions and upgrades and what we should be doing at the base, but not today. You see, XCOM Enemy Unknown is coming out with a big expansion, XCOM Enemy Within. 
The date of the release is, cleverly, 11-12-13, exactly one week from the day I posted this. My hope had been that Enemy Unknown save files could be seamlessly plugged into an enemy within context, but it turns out that's not going to be the case. So my options are to continue with this replay with none of the fun toys of Enemy Within, or to completely start over with Enemy Within in a week. Enemy Within will be fixing a lot of bugs from Enemy Unknown, adding a bunch of maps, adding in a completely new soldier class, adding in a genetics bay to mod your soldier's genes, a robotics bay to cybernetically enhance your soldiers, and new skins, new missions, an entirely new enemy called Exalt that is a human faction that's working with the aliens. Yeah, I'm not going to be uh, going without these Enemy Within toys. So yeah, I'm going to be scrapping this current run through. So here's the plan. I'm going to be editing the name file as soon as I get Enemy Within, so that I get the exact same soldiers that I still have alive. This includes all the soldiers you haven't seen yet. So if your name's been selected, don't worry, you haven't been deselected. But this also means I won't get to play the game until next Tuesday, when I've been normally posting these videos. So don't expect an Ecom video next week. In the meantime, I'll soon be posting on the Quark website the name file you all can use for your own games of XCOM Enemy Unknown, and keep an eye out for some good deals on XCOM. The Christmas season is upon us, and if there's anything I know, that means Steam sales. And if you find one for XCOM Enemy Unknown, I highly recommend it. But until my next video, splice out and game on.